Next question is from Mini Fig. Cold exposure therapy is said to have many health benefits. Would taking a cold shower be a good alternative to doing an ice bath? Does your body need to hit a certain temperature in order for the benefits to be activated? Cold showers are phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. it depends on what you mean by benefits. Mm -hmm. Now, a cold shower is nothing like an ice bath. An ice bath is a whole different level. Are they talking about like cold shock proteins? I know like Dr. Rhonda Patrick talks a lot about yeah, this. Yeah, it's all heat shock proteins and cold, you know, all the, the all of the physiological things that happen with cold. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of fasting. So when you mm -hmm. look at fasting, we can look at all the physiological benefits, mm -hmm. but honestly, the best benefits from fasting are the psychological or spiritual benefits that you have. Yeah. Same thing with the cold, you know, therapy, whether it's cold shower or the extreme cases, ice baths. Yes, there are physiological changes that happen. Yes, your body learns to acclimate. I mean, it's like training a muscle. Your body's ability to acclimate to cold or hot is something that you can strengthen and improve. And because we're always in air conditioned and heated rooms, we don't ever train them. But the real benefit is learning to be okay with being uncomfortable. Yeah. That's the big, big benefit. Well, I have something to, to add to that, just based on my experience with, uh, you know, an ice bath in general, and like I really trying to mill it over and 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 understand like what I really got out of it, uh, besides all like the science and how they're explaining it and everything. Really, to me, it was access to that parasympathetic state where I I I, I can find my way to calm in uh, you know an extreme environment. So if I'm if I'm in immersed all the way in, like my natural tendency is to to squeeze and brace as hard as I can, and that restricts your breathing. And so to not be able to breathe is a problem, uh, you know, under those conditions. And to be able to calm, I could breathe normal, and my body was more resilient once I was in the calm right. state. So it was just it totally psychologically uh, benefit. I, I would challenge that though, Sal, even more than I. I don't think it's just a a, a mental like fasting where that's the main benefits. I when I started doing the the hot cold contrast, I noticed a significant difference in the the resiliency that I had to like the common cold. Oh yeah. I used to get sick all the time. And I know Wim Hof talks a lot about this. And this is my of course my personal experience, right? But this is what I've seen with people that I've got on it the same way too, is your ability to be able to handle the extreme changes in temperature. It's you're teaching your body to adapt to that and become very good at that. And if it's very good at that, when we head into things like winter time, your body adapts. It does it handles that. When I think when most people are susceptible to getting sick, it ain't no big deal for you. So I find that being one of the most beneficial things uh, about it. Well, then. studies support that. It, you, people who do uh, ice baths or use saunas or do cold showers do get less um, infections every single year. Now, the problem with that is I've looked at the studies and they did control for all these factors, but it's really, really hard to control for the, the healthy bias factor. Right. And what I mean by that mm. is the person who spends the time to do these things also probably leads a healthier that's life. What, that, that's yeah. also why I use me as an example is that I've worked out in a gym for 20 years and been what I would say, quote unquote, a healthy person and didn't start to implement that till yeah. we all got together. And like we learned about the, the benefits of hot, cold contrast training. And when I started to do it, it was, it was when we had the podcast. It was, I mean, I don't know if you remember the first year of podcasting together, I'd get sick all the time. Yeah. It was like it, my whole life I've been that way. I just assumed that, and I assumed that I was just that way as a kid. And then I assumed that, oh, I live, I work in a gym now and I'm touching weights and I'm around people all the time. That's why I just get sick all the time. After I started using the hot, cold contrast, it's, I mean, it was a dramatic difference for me and people that I've got to actually do it and be consistent regardless if they would be quote unquote considered healthy yeah. already and making good choices, notice a big difference. Well, the studies do support that. They do support that it's probably better for your immune system, better for resilience. Um, I mean, it's it's a it's it's something that people in some countries do all to the point where I believe yeah. there's there's some eastern it's ritualized. There's some Eastern European countries where it's it's snow is outside and the, for recess the kids yeah, they jump in the snow. They jump in the snow. Yeah. They put bathing suits on. They they uh, you know I know in. I don't know what culture is. I know it's an Eastern European culture where it's it's totally customary when you give your baby, no joke, a bath or whatever, you do a cold rinse at the end 
with their children. They do this with babies and with children. Oh, you wow. remember that with Kyle? Kyle's the son didn't have never even had a warm bath ever. Mm. They trained him from day one that way of nothing but you know cold water. Mm. And remember, don't you remember that the first time he took him out to the ocean and we were talking about? Oh my God, it's freezing. That's NorCal oh, I Ocean. Remember that. Yeah. You don't remember that? Uh-huh. Yeah, his 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 kid. At, by the time he was three, four years old, had never even had a warm shower, a warm bath before. Wow. Yeah, he'd only had them in, in, in cold the entire time. Wow, mm. wow. There's also a study that shows that, and this is a short, uh, short-term short effect, but if a man takes cold showers, his testosterone levels increase, I think over the course of 10 days, then they come back down to baseline. The, but you do get this initial boost in testosterone. That's another, mm. another huge benefit that I think. I mean, do it uh, and watch how alert and awake oh my God, and how yeah. sharp you feel right that's afterwards. True. I mean, that's one of the, I mean, it Tony Robbins is big like on crazy. Yeah, Tony Robbins is big on this, right? He does the plunge and jumps on the trampoline before all his talks. That's like one of his his rituals that Better he does. Better than any nitro I've had. Oh, yeah. no, it'll wake you right up. Yeah. And and back to the original question with the shower. Showers do a great job. Yes, uh, it's it's nothing compared to cryo or an ice bath. But I tell you what, if you end uh, every morning with a, you know, the last minute to two minutes, uh, all the way cold, no warm water at all, uh, you'll see, you'll see a, a, mm-hmm. a big difference just from doing that alone. 